So with the block under your head, just kind of try to level out your pelvis, get the pubic bone and ASIS bones to where they're level with your mat. Feet flat on the floor, hip width apart. You can just rest your hands wherever. And just take a few deep breaths, allow the belly to expand. Just take a moment to arrive on the mat. And then maybe start nodding chin to chest. All right, Sandy's got her block, we're set. So we're just relaxing for a moment, Sandy. Allow the belly to expand. Nod chin to chest gently, just moving at a nice slow pace here to kind of just massage out the back of the skull. So just allowing the firmness of the block to give a little gentle pressure on these trigger points here, right at the base of the skull. And then begin taking your chin over to the left and moving really, really slowly over to the right. So just notice which side rolls easier, which side feels better, which side maybe has a lot of tension or pain even maybe at the base of the skull. There's a lot of muscle attachments right there. And so if, you, if it feels better to be on one side than the other, you can kind of camp out there and do tiny little chin nods on that one side and kind of looking down towards your armpit. Or you can do gentle side to sides. Just explore some movement and some massaging with your head on that block. Do a little bit on each side. So one of the things we want to work towards with our Pilates is finding movements with ease, finding, releasing the tension, not holding tension where we don't need it, but having the strength in our deep, deep muscles to allow us to move freely without holding tension in our head, neck and shoulders, in our hips, other places. So sometimes it's good to just take these moments to notice where you do hold tension. And this is good, really good kind of gentle massaging. You can work on myofascial release kind of in this way. So just take your head side to side again. If you have kind of camped out in any areas, let it rainbow from looking at left armpit over to right. And just kind of go at your pace, but get that massage back and forth. And then bring your head back to neutral. Go ahead and check in with your transversus abdominis. So think of engaging that lower part first, right in the pelvis. Then think of navel to spine, and then move up to the ribs. Think of them drawing down and together. But think of this inner energy or engagement that you've got going, kind of coming in and up around your rib cage. And now much in the chest a little bit, keeping that core engagement, keeping the ribs knitting down and and notice how the head being propped up on your block will kind of help you get there with you more. Pee boy. What's that? And then just really push your hands down into the mat. Feel your armpit muscles, your serratus anterior, your, your lats, and everything in the back body. Engage a little bit as you push your arms down, also your triceps. 
Take a deep inhale to make sure you've got your core engaged. As you exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up to look down at your belly. And then inhaling to lower, exhale to lift. So just move at your own pace a few times. And for a while here, press your arms down into the mat. So we're not lifting them like we would normally do. And just think, notice how much tension you're holding in your head and neck when you lift. See if you can release some of that tension by engaging along the rib cage more and the backside body more. So just notice. And then lower the head down, roll it out on your block. And take the arms up to the ceiling, palms facing one another, ribs still drawing in, transverses still engaged. Send your fingertips up to the ceiling by sending your shoulder blades out around your rib cage, and then slide the shoulder blades back down towards the mat. And just feel them sliding along the ribs. Sounds like you've worked some mobility in yoga this morning, so we'll just get some more. Think of now sending the palms out overhead and the thumbs out to the sides. And then start moving, inhale, arms overhead, exhale, hands down towards hips. So making these arcs. And the inhale, arms overhead is an extra challenge to keep the ribs knitting down. So that's easier on the exhale. So find that challenge of inhaling arms up, exhaling arms down. And take your arms out to the side. And with your thumbs still spiraling those palms open, thumbs down, send your arms up and overhead and then down towards the hips. But you're dragging the thumbs kind of along the floor. And keep drawing the ribs together. And then you can start sending arms up and out. Start the big circles, just moving with your breath. Keep spiraling the palms and thumbs away. And I've set myself up too close to the wall to do this. <laughs> so I'm doing one arm with you. So reverse those circles. And maybe one more, and then shake the shoulders out, shake the arms out a little bit. And just bring your arms down to your sides. Move into the pelvis. So keep that core engaged, keep the transversus engaged, keep the ribs nice and engaged. As you inhale, really feel the lungs expand out and back. So keep really thinking of that lung expansion while your ribs are knitting down. And move into your pelvis now with the pelvic curl. So trying to drop the tailbone down, let the low back arch a little bit. And just notice what that feels like. Only go with what feels good to you with your range of motion and then drop the low back down. This is tucking the pelvis, sending the pubic bone higher than your hip bones. So just go back and forth between the two or within your range of motion that feels good to your body. And then really build into it the lower spinal movement too. Really feel your low back articulating one bone at a time as it presses down into the mat. 
and then one bone at a time as the tailbone drops down and the low back starts to arch. So really feel all that there is to feel into this. And notice, can you release the quads? If you're using the quads, can you release the butt and really move from the core, the pelvic floor and the hip flexors? And then come back to neutral pelvis. So cubic bone and hip bones are level. You can place your hands up on them to feel that they're nice and level with the mat. Try to keep them there. Maybe put your hands on your hips, those bony hip bones, your ASIS. Try not to move the hips at all from left to right and bring that right leg up using the core muscles to tabletop. Stephanie, to Stephanie, I have yeah. a question. When you're yeah. in neutral spine, should, your, should you have a slight arch in your back? It's not flat, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. So fit my hand under my low back okay. and if, if that feels safe to you like it doesn't hurt your back it's okay if you do start to have any back pain or if your ab muscles aren't strong enough yet to hold you in that neutral spine definitely lean towards the tuck or flattening the low back towards the mat but ideally in pilates we want you in that neutral spine neutral pelvis which means you do have a little bit of lumbar Okay. So yeah, it's up to your body. Sometimes it takes you a little while to get the neutral spine or to get there with no pain. So definitely listen. If you can leave space, do. And then lower lift and you can keep that foot relaxed. And you're working on that core engagement that will enable you to do this with control without shifting the body left to right. It's like the hips are just glued in place to your mat. So that is where all the work and control comes into the movement. And also not letting, of course, the ankle come in towards your bum, keeping that foot out as it lowers. And also you were talking about the back arching. And so your foot may only lower an inch. If you can hold neutral spine, neutral pelvis, but it only feels good to your back to lower an inch, move within that inch, make it a teeny tiny movement and you'll get stronger faster. You'll get more movement faster because you're getting it where you need to be. So gently lower that foot down. We were there a while, so shake it out if you need to, knees to one side and then the other. And then meet back up with feet parallel with the hips. Check back in with the core and at the ribs. You can engage your arms by pressing your hands down into the mat, or you can keep your hands up on your bony hip bones to kind of really feel if your hips are moving around or not. So then inhale to prepare and knit the ribs, engage the core, exhale to float the left. And then same thing. And then check in here. Like it may be different on the left versus the right as far as how safe your back feels. You may, or to keep your pelvis still, you may have to make your movement, your leg lowering down even smaller. You may need to imprint the back more down, the low back flattening out towards the mat. So just notice how your body is wanting to react from each side. Because all of those little notices and making the movement smaller is what helps you find that movement without building tension, without building tension in your jaw and neck because you're trying to fight the hips or the core or whatever. So drop that foot down, rock it left to right. And then bring the spine neutral, pelvis neutral, kind of check in with your hip and pubic bone connections. Drop the ribs down, 
press the hands into the mat this time. So really engage the back body, the triceps. We're gonna move from the core and take a deep inhale and then exhale, float one leg up and then the other leg. So check in with both legs lifted. And then same thing, tiny movement as small as you need it to be to lower one leg and then the other. And the goal again is not to get your toes clear down to the mat. It's to try to keep those rib hip connections of the ribs being down, the hips being glued to the mat, not rocking from left to right or forward and back. So all those things, and without holding tension in your neck and jaw. So go a few more. And then squeeze them together, hug them into the chest. Rock it out a little bit. So sometimes you'll notice if you've been like going really big sometimes, but it's not as controlled if you make it smaller with more control sometimes, just play around with it, you'll notice like, oh, it just got 10 times harder even though it hurt. So find those challenges when you can. So feet hip width apart again. Let's get the pelvis rocking left to right. So feel that left hip drop down and then the right. Just using the core muscles, and maybe a little bit of pelvic floor muscles, but not quads, not butt, into moving that pelvis left to right. And then think of going around in a circle with it. And just notice, go clockwise, counterclockwise, try to keep the knees from moving. Try to keep the ribs drawing down. And just notice that subtle pelvic mobility you can get rocking it. And then the back up in neutral. Neutral or that slight tuck. So take the arms overhead. Take a deep inhale as you send them up and overhead, back behind, but without letting the ribs flare. And then as you exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Bring the arms up over the hips. Look down towards your belly. Pause here. Think of hollowing out from left to right in the belly. It's like you're scooping it out. That's why we sometimes call it a scoop. And check in with your pelvis. Maybe rock the pelvis in and out of neutral, in and out of that tuck. And you can rest your head down whenever you need to. But just feeling that when you're up, because when you come up, you want to move out of neutral. So just see if you can hold that neutral. Inhale it back down. And exhale, curl up. Notice if you move out of neutral pelvis when you come up. So just do that a few times. Trying to challenge your pelvis to stay nice and still. Nice, and then lower the head down, rock it side to side. Massage it on that prop. And then bring your hands behind your head, kind of interlace your fingers right at the base of the skull. And check in, send your elbows up to the ceiling, send your elbows out wide a few times. And then send your elbows out kind of halfway to where you can really feel the serratus right below the armpit and the back body engage. And then curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Keep feet flat on the mat here. We're going to send right armpit to left knee. Really feel into that oblique twist. It's coming from your navel point and your hips are staying still. Inhale, center. Exhale, left armpit, right knee. And then just keep inhaling center. 
Exhaling to find that opposite twist. Keep pushing your head back into your arms and your hands. Keeping the head, neck, and shoulders lifted if you can, but rest them any time you need to. And we're just going to flow through a few more. Notice if your pelvis really starts to tuck and your low back really starts to flatten as you move. Can you challenge it to stay neutral? And then if you're evened out, you can lower head, neck, and shoulders down. Rock the head side to side or rock the knees side to side. Just take a moment to kind of check in. And then bring one knee into the chest, lengthen out through the other leg, and just use it to rock you up to seated. So one of the first classical exercises is that full roll up where you're flat on the mat and you roll all the way up over your legs. And so to prep to get there, we're gonna be just off of our sacrum, feet flat on the mat. And you wanna think of kind of pushing the feet away from you to really activate through the legs. You can hold behind the knees. And then stack your spine up straight. <laughs> Don't have to mute you. So stack your spine up straight, and then as you exhale, tuck chin into the chest and begin to roll down halfway to your half roll back. So you start inhaling up tall and you exhale, roll back down. And you think of going one bone at a time and reaching your lower back down. And then bring your forehead to your knees. Keep the spine as round as you can get it, looking at your belly. And then untuck the pelvis to stack it up straight. Inhale here, knit the ribs. Exhale, tuck the pelvis, begin to round it down. Send the elbows out to the sides and the shoulders down away from the ears. Yeah. Look towards your belly, hold it there. Engage your legs more. And tuck your head into your knees. Round, round, round the belly. Untuck the pelvis, back it up straight. Inhale here. Exhale, tuck and round, elbows out, shoulders down, away from the ears. So pause there in your half roll back. Can you drop the shoulders and relax them even more? Can the elbows go out more to engage the lats and the back side of the body while you're looking at your belly? And then on an exhale, maybe take Forehead to knees, rounding the spine. So think of coming into a tiny little ball and then untucking the pelvis, stacking the spine up straight so that you're right up on your sit bones. And exhale, tuck and round. Take an inhale, hold, check in with your shoulders. Are they down away from the ears? And then send the forehead to the knees. Um, tuck the pelvis, stack the spine up straight. And then send the legs out long, just find a nice stretch. Think of finding your sit bones. And then stack the spine up straight, one bone at a time, bending through the knees to get that nice straight spine. Kind of pushing the heels away actively, send the arms out, palms facing one another. Check in with the shoulders, make sure they're not really reaching out here, but that the shoulder blades are nice and down onto the rib cage. Take a deep inhale, knit the ribs, fire the belly. Exhale, tuck and round, look towards your belly. 
as you find that spine stretch. And then we're going to start at the pelvis, let the knees bend as we untuck the pelvis, stack the spine up one bone at a time. The chin is tucked, crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Exhale, tuck and round. Keep the shoulders down and back. Your forehead comes out towards your knees and your belly is in and up and your mid back is pushing away. And then on your next inhale, untuck, stack the spine up straight. So even now sitting, we're moving into tucking, untucking the pelvis. You can see what that feels like from the sitting position. So tucking the pelvis under, rounding. Finding that spinal stretch here. So maybe massage around in, those, in it a little bit. See what it feels like to wiggle the upper body. Let the head just kind of grow heavy. And then untuck the pelvis, stack the spine up straight. And then relax it a minute if you need to. Otherwise, keep your legs out. You can feel free to let them go a little wider. We're going to move into our spinal twist. I'm going to come seated because I'm right at the wall, but you can keep with your legs out long. So arms come out. Your ribs are drawing down. You're right up on your sit bones as you inhale. Exhale, twist from the navel point to turn to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale, turn to the right or the opposite side, whichever way you went. And just move with your breath, inhaling center, dropping the shoulders away from the ears, exhaling right. Keep thinking of the crown of the head reaching up to the ceiling, the chin tucking. Do one more each side, make sure you even it out. And when you come back to center, just go ahead and exhale, find that stretch again. Just a forward fold, feel a stretch through the hamstrings. You hinge from the hips. Shake your head out. And just kind of take this time to check in with the body. So then go ahead and bring your feet back towards you, rock back on your sacrum. You can hold behind the knees or the shins. Find that roll like a ball shape, that tiny ball shape, whatever that means to you. It might be way out here, it might be tucked in close. Allow your shoulders to drop away from the ears. Send your elbows out wide, feel all of the muscle engagement. Drop your chin towards chest. Look towards your navel, take a round, round spine, and begin to use your core to rock forward and back. Tiny little rolls here, using the core to power the movement. If you want to come into the full movement, so you can stay here, especially if rocking back doesn't feel good to your spine. Or you can inhale back, exhale up. Yeah, nice. Maybe do a couple more. And then stretch it forward. Find your hamstring stretch. Let your head hang. Notice if you've got tension in your head, neck, and shoulders. And then we're going to pop back up. Right back up onto our sacrums. Bend the knees at 90 degrees. Hold behind the knee. Think of rounding the lower spine down to the mat. Look at your belly to keep rounding through the spine. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. And just hold this teaser here. You can advance it by sending the palms to the ceiling and letting go of the legs, by reaching the toes up. 
And maybe by opening the chest more. So find your teaser. Even if you're here with arms behind the knees, think of opening up the collarbones while the low back is still rounding. Nice. And then hug the knees in, kind of send them side to side, or just give a little squeeze. And then see if you can pop right back up into your shape. Wherever you're at, can you hollow out the belly more? Can you open up the collarbones more? Maybe you can lower lift the legs, even if that's here. Yeah. Maybe two more. And then hug the knees in, shake the head out, maybe send the chin clear down to the chest. Let the back of the neck find some stretch. And then slowly bringing the head up. Let's revisit our teaser shape one more time. So wherever you're at, the collarbones are opening, the low back is rounding, your navel is kind of in and up under your ribs. Can you start to articulate the back down to the mat and then articulate back up? So the legs will kind of stay in their general shape. They'll just shoot forward and back as you turn to round the spine down and round the spine back up. So you can modify with one foot flat, one leg up. So see how that works. And check in with the pelvis, trying to keep it somewhat neutral. You can switch out legs that are aiming up. And you're working on moving bone by bone in the spine. Yeah, nice. And then hug the knees in, maybe send the hands back, rock the knees side to side. And maybe take a minute here, let's find a reverse tabletop. So your feet can be flat on the mat. You can send them out long if you want to, but you can also just keep them bent, taking an inhale to engage the ribs, squeezing the elbows towards one another, and then exhale to lift the hips. Think of the knees being right in alignment with the hips. You're looking out past your knees. It can lower down and lift back up. Or you can just hold, you can hold and try to float a leg. So you can make it your pose. And resting when you need to. Shake the wrists out a little bit. Come cross-legged for a moment. Bring the backs of the hands together and really connect even down to the wrist. Make sure the wrists don't come apart and then lower those hands down, but trying to keep the wrists together. So find that stretch and just hold and breathe there wherever those come. So the, not looking to get them all the way down, perhaps. Just getting a good stretch in the wrist. You can play around with sending the fingertips one direction and then the other. Think of opening the collarbones. And then shake the hands out. Make sure you're right up on your sit bones so that you can have a nice neutral spine, neutral pelvis, drop the ribs and then take the arms overhead or actually to the back of the head. Interlace the fingers, check in with the ribs, make sure they didn't layer too much. Try to keep those down. Try to find your midway point. 
with the elbows so that your serratus anterior and your back body is engaged. Take a deep inhale and exhale up and over to the right. Inhaling center, exhaling up and over to the left. So then imagine that your upper body is squeezed between two planes of panes of glass. Keep checking in with the back body, all the engagement, pushing your head into your hands and not dumping into your side as you come up and over. It's like you're coming up and over a beach ball. Yeah. And then meet back up at the center, check in with the ribs, check in with the back engagement. We're gonna come up and over to the right. We're gonna twist from the navel to look up at the left armpit. Untwist, stack the spine up straight, and then up and over to the left. Look up at the right elbow, twisting from the navel. Untwist, and then stack the spine up straight. So one movement at a time, back over to the right, twist to the left, untwist, stack the spine up straight. Over to the left, twist to look up to the right, untwist, stack the spine up straight, shifting with the ribs and sit bones. One more time each side, and to the right, twisting to look up and left, untwist, Stack the spine up straight. Check in with the ribs left. Look up to the right. Untwist. Stack the spine up straight. Shake the arms out. Check in with the head, neck, and shoulders. And then go ahead and come on to hands and knees. So send your arms out nice and wide. Try to separate your fingers, reach the thumbs towards one another, and then find that neutral spine. Draw the abdomen in, draw the ribs in. Send the sit bones straight out behind you. And then keeping the hips and pelvis in neutral, keeping the spine in neutral, we're gonna do that small movement right in between the shoulder blades, the rhomboid push-up. So pressing that upper mid back to the ceiling and then just relaxing. And the head of the shoulder bone, head of the humerus here is not moving. It's just that rib cage area pushing up to the ceiling. Think of spiraling your elbows straight behind you, elbow creases forward. Nice. Two more. And then keep all of that engagement. Keep your neutral spine. Rock the body right and left. Trying to keep the elbows squeezing towards one another, the thumbs reaching, the first finger mound pushing into the mat. And then check back in, neutral spine, neutral pelvis. Knit the ribs. And let's move into spinal articulation, cat cow, with beginning with the head. So let the head drop towards the mat. Begin to round the upper spine, mid spine, lower spine up into your angry cat. And then start from the head, lift it up slowly. Dropping the belly down towards the mat. Move really nice and slow, feeling it out one bone at a time, starting with the head in and out of your cat cow. See how much spinal movement you can get. Notice where you have chunks. And the head is just one more vertebrae at the very top. So just picture that and go through a couple more.
And then check back in, neutral spine, neutral pelvis. So the sit bones are reaching straight back. The core is engaged and the ribs are still up into the abdomen. And then we're going to push the hand, weight into the wrist of the hands. Think of spiraling the elbow creases forward, slight bend in the elbow if you need it, just so that you're not hyperextending the elbows. And then curl the toes under. We're going to float the knees up off the mat, hover here, and then shift left and right. Keeping all of that neutral, keep the elbow creases moving forward. And then lower it back down, shake the toes out, find your child's pose, but aim for that neutral pelvis. So notice if your tailbone's curled way under, can you unround it, send the sit bones straight behind you. And then come up on to your elbows. Forearms flat. Got a block in my way, but send your legs out long. Push the pubic bone down. Activate the navel, the spine, the ribs are in and up. And elbows are right under the shoulders, ideally. And then draw your shoulders away from the ears, draw your shoulder blades down on your back. And then see if you can float your legs up and kick the right leg in towards the buttocks and then reach it long, kick the left leg in. And just keep switching. Keep trying to push the pubic bone down. Keep trying to lengthen out the neck. Nice. And then when you're ready, push back, find your child's pose. But draw the sit bones up and back. Find that stretch through the sit bones, through the pelvis. Nice. Let's go ahead and come down for one more. So legs out long, pubic bone pushes down. So lengthen out the low back. Bring your hands into the diamond shape right under your forehead. Draw the shoulders away from the ears, the shoulder blades down the back. Push your hands forward. They're not moving, but they're just activating the arms, the back body. Push the feet down into the mat. Activate through the legs. Inhaling, float head, neck, and shoulders up. Open the chest. Reach the neck long. Exhale, float the head back down. And in and out with your breath a few times, lifting on the inhale, exhaling the lower. Keep the ribs knitting together. Keep the belly in and up. And take the hands with the head a few times, so floating the arms up on the inhale, exhaling the lower. And then hands under the shoulders, push back, find your child's pose. Reach the sit bones up and back. And then come up onto your right side. And grab your block, place it under your head. Your back is going to be lined up with the back of your mat. 
shoulders and hips are stacked over one another. Engage through the core, knit the ribs, feel that right side of the body lifting up off the mat. Send your right leg out to that back front corner of your mat and bend that left knee in at that tabletop position. So it's bent at a 90 degree bend. And then check in with the top hip. Is it still right over the bottom hip? And is your ankle flexed, feet parallel with the ceiling? We're gonna take that leg back and forward. And keep knitting the ribs, keep the core engaged. Think of relaxing neck and shoulders. Think of working that outer hip and keep leveling off the top of the foot. Nice. And now send the knee forward, open the leg up, straight leg, slight bend in the knee if you need it. But we're going to do the same thing forward and back. Keep knitting the ribs, keep checking that the hips stay stacked one over the other. Nice. Two more. And then externally rotate from that hip. So the toes point up and away, reach that leg even longer and do some tiny circles, five to eight in one direction and then five to eight in the opposite direction. Trying to keep the hips nice and still, or at least the pelvis, pelvis and upper body nice and still. And then we're gonna take that leg up Check in that you haven't brought your hip bone closer to your ribs. Keep that long, and we're going to lower lift. Keep lifting that right side of the rib cage up and off the mat. Nice. Two more. And then hug that in, give that hip a pat if you need to. And you're just gonna turn up onto your other side. So coming up onto the left. Make sure your spine is parallel with the back of the mat. Your top arm is kind of a kickstand. Make sure your shoulders are over one another and that the hips are stacked. Send that left leg out long, pointing towards that front edge of the back of the mat. Check back in with the upper hip, bend that top knee 90 degrees. Top of the foot is parallel with the ceiling. Draw the ribs up off the mat, engage the core, and begin sending that leg forward and back. So use that top hand to help keep the upper body still. And check in with how this hip is feeling this morning. Maybe the movement needs to small, be smaller on one side versus the other so that your body is not rolling around in space. You're able to keep that upper body still. Yeah, nice job. Let's do a couple more. Keep checking in with the top of the foot. Keep checking in with the ribs. Are they drawing down and together? And then bring that knee forward, extend the heel away. So pushing away with the heel, top of the foot parallel with the ceiling, take that whole leg forward and back. So again, bend the knee here if you need to, otherwise you're trying to open up the back of the knee. 
keep drawing in the ribs. We've got the extra work of our bottom leg being extended at an angle. So that's making it harder for us to keep our body stable. So extra work. A few more here. And then externally rotate from that top hip, but make sure you still have it stacked over your bottom hip. And then we're gonna do our tiny circles. Five to eight in one direction. Keep reaching that leg long, reach it even further out away from you. And then reverse your circles. Knit the ribs, float the left side body up off the mat. All of those things. And then holding that external rotation, we're gonna lower lift. Make sure the pelvis isn't moving here. So you're limiting your range of motion so that you don't bring your hip bone closer to your rib cage as you move. Nice. Keep lifting the left side body up, two more. And hug it in, pat it out. All right, nice job. Let's come back up here. Back to hands and knees. Shake the hips side to side. So feel into that area we just worked. And think of separating the fingers. Think of finding your neutral, finding your neutral spine, ribs drawing in. And then float the right knee up but check in with the pelvis. Make sure the pelvis stayed neutral. Inflate your rib cage up to the ceiling and send that leg out along. Level your pelvis. Reach the left arm. And aim here just for that neutral spine, level hips, float the ribs to the ceiling. <laughs> Just using that hold, that static hold to work. And then lower the left hand down, lower the right knee down. Keep that neutral spine, so keep the sit bones reaching straight back, don't let the pelvis curl, and then shift the body left to right. Keep reaching the sit bones up and back. Keep spiraling the elbow creases forward. And then make sure your weight is even over hands and knees. And begin to float the left leg up this time. That left knee, level out through the hips. Keep the ribs inflated in and up. Send the left leg out long, flex through the ankle. Begin to float the right arm. Flex through the ankle and push that left heel away. Check in with the ribs. Are they still inflated up towards the ceiling? You should be able to feel the ribs. Reach heel and fingertips away. And float them down. Check in with the pelvis. Keep the sit bones reaching back. Shift left and right. Push your first finger pads down into the mat. Stretch your fingers out. Begin to find your cat-cow, this time starting from the tailbone. 
Enjoy that spinal articulation. So moving nice and slow, trying to get the entire spine moving. And then when you're ready, push back, find another child's pose. Work on the ribs inflating in and up while the sit bones go straight back and they really reach. So find that push pull between the pelvis and the ribs. And then walk your hands up and over to the right. Maybe taking that left hand over the right. Find a little lateral bend in the spine. Keep trying to untuck the pelvis and send the sit bones up and back. Walk the hands back through center and up and over to the left. You can take your right hand over your left. Check in with the ribs. Are they inflating? And then lift the sit bones up and back. So find those push poles in the body, oppositional energy. And now think, are you bending and not twisting? Just checking to make sure that your upper body is not twisting. Walk the hands back to center and push back up to hands and knees. Grab your block, have your block handy. And let's come down onto our backs again. So just with the block handy, not under the head yet, we're going to move into our bridging. So feet in close to the sit bones, feet and knees hip width apart. Check in with your pelvis, drop your ribs, engage the core and begin your pelvis tilt forward and back. Try to keep your neck nice and long on the mat and begin to bridge up bone by bone. So start with just the tailbone and then the sacrum. Go as slow as you can through that low back. Really press down to get the low back lifting up one bone at a time. Rolling all the way up to your shoulder blades. Check in at the top, knit the ribs, reach the knees long, squeeze the knees towards one another. And then roll upper body, uh, mid back, upper back, mid back, low back. Hips and sacrum last and flow a couple more times. It's going nice and slow and really trying to get the spine moving. One bone at a time. Squeeze the triceps down, work the triceps. Work the back body. Mindfully moving and noticing if your left side of your hips is reaching the mat at the same time as your right hip. Try to keep it level from left to right left and right side body moving together. And then push down with the arms, meet up at the top of your bridge, squeeze the shoulder blades together, push down with your hands, see if you can float your left knee up towards your chest. Check in, level off the hips, maybe you lengthen that leg and lower lift. Check in, are those hips level? And then bend the knee into the chest, lower that foot down, level off the hips. Articulate one bone at a time, bridging back down. Bridge back up. Check in at the top to make sure the knees are squeezing together and that they're reaching away from the body. Push down through the arms and hands, float the right knee into the chest. 
Maybe it straightens towards the ceiling, maybe not. Find some lower lift. Keep pushing down through that left heel. And then bend the knee into the chest, lower the right foot down, level off the hips if you need to, and then articulate down one bone at a time. And then take your knees side to side, find your windshield wiper. And take your feet as wide as your mat. Find a nice wide leg windshield wiper to each side. Take a few breaths. And then meet the knees back up towards the ceiling, feet hip width apart again. And we're gonna bridge up high enough to place our block under the sacrum. So you can go the low height if you want to go the medium height and you're happy there, feel free to go a little higher. But then check in wherever you're at, make sure your pubic bone is higher than your hip bones. Have your arms pressing down into the mat, palms down. And then just start checking in with your ribs, your sternum. So if you're squeezing your butt, relax your butt. When you do that, make sure that you're still happy on your block. You don't want it hurting your tailbone. Don't want it on the tailbone, it needs to be up on your sacrum. From here, let's just move into our relaxation and our releases. So think of releasing the abdomen, let the transversus abdominis just relax. The pelvic floor relaxes. The sternum and rib cage grow heavy towards the mat. Keep checking in with the breath, mindfully breathing. And can you release tension somewhere in the body with each exhale? So just this last little bit of class, finding that release through the front of the hips and pelvis. Imagine that your hip bones are finding space between them. That your sit bones are just growing heavy your sacrum's growing heavy into the block. Check in with your lower jaw. Is your tongue down into your lower jaw? Are you holding tension? Or is there any tension you can release from your jaw, head, neck, and shoulders? Can you create space in between your ears. Think of allowing in space and lightness. Release more tension from your bottom ribs to your pubic bone along the front of the abdomen, either side of the belly button. Allow your psoas muscle there to lengthen, to soften.
And then you're just gonna bring your hands to your block, trying to really push down and allow the bones to lift you without trying to engage a bunch of muscles. And just slide the block out from under the sacrum. Find some gentle movement side to side or whatever feels good. And then just slowly rolling to your side and coming on up. 